The show must go on. The show must go on, as they say. I'm naked in the studio. Oh, now my, if the cameras are on. Oh, God, this show is just about me hanging out in this awesome space. Dave has not communicated with me. Uh -oh. He knows about the show. He says he's going to be here. Often, a lens sees you, and then, and then someone sees you through that lens. Oh, God, I love this. And what's great about an edited show, uh, and I'm really against live shows, and I'll tell you why. Editing is, is, is a gift to make video amazingly powerful. Like, I love that. Like, it is, it's the thing everyone doesn't want to do because it takes time. It's the thing that I'm learning to really love to do because, man, if you can edit, you can, it's, you can make magic. Ooh, perfect. Okay, it's 410. If Dave's not here, by we're gonna do, we're doing pre-show till 420. But until then, I'm your therapist. My name is Ryan. I suggest um, looking at editing as one of the most incredible, incredible things that you could possibly be spending your time doing because you're manipulating time. Because it makes you feel so freaking relaxed knowing that you can just go delete, 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 delete. Imagine if this was live right now. It's like, you don't have time to do this. You gotta be like, we're doing a show, da, 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 the whole fucking time. Like there's a lot of things that we do that are enjoyable, but do we ever ask the question, hey, do any of these things that we're doing, should we focus on any of them? Like a lot. It's funny, Facebook, because it popped up the other day, Chico. Oh, your, your all time most liked video or like, that created the most joy, whatever the hell, however they worded it. And it was screaming in the darkness. And at this, so I had this, I had this thought of like, oh, I, I wanna keep doing that. I, I wanna keep in, I wanna keep engaging in creating a show, working it out, knowing Chico, knowing the, knowing, get, letting the relationships grow. It's like, there's always this assumption, like no one's watching, but it's not no one's watching. It's like, what if 13 people watch? If the right, what if the right one person watches, sits down and watches it and goes, Oh, this is so interesting. I love what they're doing. Let me contact them because I want to create symbiosis with them. What are we creating and let's and let's do it as best as we can, as professionally as we can. And I always thought as a stand-up comedian that I was after uh, more people, more fame, bigger career. But you're not after that. You're after uh, more pure art form, cr uh, creative that's, it's all about the art. It's all about the feeling, the creative art, and everything else is a freaking distraction. There's only so much freaking time in the day. You're gonna get up and have to go to bed again. There isn't time for everything. We need to have that conversation first before everyone says, I wanna talk about this, and I wanna do this, and I wanna, it's like, we do not have time to have every conversation, to, to do everything we wanna do with music, or food or anything. We don't have time. It doesn't work that way. You, you have to do other stuff. You need to take a shower, go to the bathroom, or pick up your kids. And it's really been hitting me. I'm like, oh shit, don't waste anyone else's time. Their time is sacred. Don't take it up by, say, hey, I'm in your, I'm in your way now. Pay attention to me. Whoa, you don't know how long they have on the planet. So you want to make sure, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm being very just uh, respectful of other people's time. You know, I used to be a relationship coach and I still think deeply about relationships. How do people get along? And there's this theory by this physicist, Tom Campbell. So he's got this one, he's got these two videos. He talks about relationships. I'm like, what is this physicist guy talking about? It's like, you know, the core of, of relationships, you know? And I'm like, what is he talking about? This is interesting, because he's only ever talking about quantum physics and how everything is a virtual reality and we live in a simulation. It's always, that's his whole thing. He goes, I have this theory on relationships. I've, do, I've done it for myself and my relationships and I've given it to about half a dozen of my friends. And they've all reported back that it's, it's working very well to 
to make the relationships better. And he says, most relationships are need-based, 99.9%. You fall, you don't so much fall in love as you fall in need with the other person. You have needs, you meet someone, they have needs, and you, and you play a game of how do you meet mine and I meet yours. And he says, this will never works. It'll always uh, end up creating uh, frustration. Um, you won't feel your needs, needs are getting met en enough. You'll want more. Um, and so forth, and this is why there's so much divorce and, and uh, conflict in relationships. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a contractual re uh, relationship that's about needs and it'll never be like amazingly loving because it's not love-based. And he says a love-based relationship is just where you do things just out of love because you love the person. It takes one to change to just say, my top goal in my life is this person's happiness, to love this person. When the woman wants something, if you just, it doesn't matter if you disagree, it doesn't matter if you don't think it's the best idea, it doesn't matter, it's like, it's what she wants. You love her. And he, he says, you can't, you can't fake it, you can't do it, you have to actually think this is what you want to do. You can't just say, okay, I'm gonna go with my wife to this thing, just to, just to go, it's like, no, you have to be like, I'm gonna go with my wife to this thing because like, I love my wife and my highest calling in my life is love and to love her, that's why I'm going. And so that's your truth. He says, ultimately, the, a, a woman just falls in love with you on such a higher degree because like, how could you not love something that was loving you unconditionally? If one person just does it, then it's over. It's like, I'm just gonna love you unconditionally. I don't trust you. I still love you no matter what. I want to break up with you. I s still love you and I will be there for however any way I can. You just say, I'm, I just love you no matter what. God, we're off on the rails on this comedy show. 425, we missed our begin. David Vincelette has not come to the studio. <laughs> Screaming in the darkness. These episodes are short and tight. We cut out all the fluff. The point of life is not to just bliss out and be happy. It's not the point. The point of ha life is to live life. You think we, you, you can feel dread and, and, uh, and unhappiness uh, for a reason. You can feel pain for a reason. Should, should those things never be experienced? You should never cry. You should never be unhappy in any way. Bullshit. You're a full spectrum human being. We're pure life. And we get to express it through this cool avatar thing called our body. And we have a name and we, this is the reality we live in, but it's not who we are. I'm just a person. No more than that. Be radically you. Screaming in the darkness. Chico, as long as I have your, I swear to God, if you said, if you said, Ryan, honestly, I, you have my support and I mean that. I think that's all I need. Man, I've done big shows for thousands of people and this isn't that. And it's like, no, it's not that. But neither were, those things weren't this. This is amazing. I got the um, shaman comedian at gmail.com. Or maybe comedian shaman. So I could be comedian shaman at YouTube. Just one idea. I never can settle on an idea. I make a mountain out of a molehill. I'm asking if, if Kelty is ready for the show. <laughs> Wait, what are you, do, what are you doing? Um, you caught us right when um, all the chocolate had just melted and had to be mixed in with the quick oats. Perfect timing. <laughs> so do you want to see Kelty's covered? Yeah, I think all the fans at home would love to see Kelty's covered. <laughs> the covered holding a candle. Hey, you know you're live on TV. Well, so not exactly. Are we live? Are we live, Chico? Gosh. Hope so not. I hope not. Oh my God, Kelty has a freaking. We got a zoom. We, we got like an image on that. We got a freaking. She's doing a séance in a cupboard, and apparently she she uh, lives in there. No, I don't. <laughs> Fortunes. Oh, cool. That's cool. Hey, I can't fit in there, though. I'm too big. No, you just have to stick your head in there. <laughs> should, do you recommend that you think other children should find a cabinet in their house to find make a cool hangout spot? If you have a dream, just go for it. And if you see a cabinet that doesn't have that much stuff in it, then make something cool then. <laughs> Yes! To wrap things up, on the count of three, we all have to scream together, uh, you know, for the, 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 the name of the show is Screaming in the Darkness. So, 
Here we go, everyone. Um, get ready for it. One, two, three. Ah! Nice. Who's this? We have someone. Hello. I like you so much already. <laughs> okay. Tell me about yourself a little bit. I was born a poor naked child of parents of both sexes, you know. <laughs> it's been an adventure since then. Yeah? What, what's something that you enjoy doing, you'd love do, spending your actual time engaged in? I'm, I'm a writer, editor. My hobby was painting. I wrote a book. I do all kinds of stuff. Um, cool, right. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. did you write a book about? Courage. Made 80 videos with Chico, about 80 chapters in the book. I'm George Spencer. Welcome to another episode of Courage 101, True Tales of Grit and Glory. Each episode is based on a chapter from my new book, Courage 101. Isn't it amazing how you can meet someone and, and like them instantly? Clawson, Clawson. Ryan, Ryan Clawson, youngest Clawson. of six children, 35, born 19. 84, March 19th, grew up in Hanover, became a hockey player, really? left Hanover High School after two years, went to Phillips Exeter Academy for two oh, years. What a shame. You Huge have, shame. You could have gone to Lawrenceville and gotten a real education. <laughs> hey. Hey. So uh, then I became a, a dating coach. I was doing uh, dating relationship uh -huh. coaching at colleges. Really, I was doing an hour comedy show because I was a yeah, comedian yeah. about dating relationships. I read a bunch of books, and that's what I did. Uh -huh. And then I got really into stand-up comedy, worked in New York, Boston, wow. L.A., wow. signed with a big manager, wow. thought I was going to be a big wow. comedian, wow. and then I went for a hike yeah. in Altadena, California, uh -huh. and I met a man living in a cave, uh -huh. okay. and I had a spiritual awakening. Uh -huh. Shot a movie about his life for the next wow. year with my brother. Totally changed what I, my perspective on life. What I was into my ideas of, uh, of love and yeah. sharing and community and family yeah. were now in my yeah. mind. Uh -huh. Moved home to Hanover yeah. in 2015 yeah. to take over an office building owned by my father, Bill Clausen, who was an yeah. attorney in town. Uh -huh. I called it a World Peace Center and started housing homeless people, okay. but it was not zoned to be lived in. It was an office building, so it was wow. illegal. So yeah. the town and the police, and it became this uh, sort of, we weren't, uh, I thought that I would be supported as sort of like a hero, like yeah. I'm finding the people under the bridges and I'm bringing them here and everyone yeah. come, let's the community. And it, 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 they looked at me sort of like a crazy loon that's yeah. throwing parties for homeless people. So we did that and that ran out of money and didn't work. And yeah. so then I went to the big island of Hawaii, to this town called Pahoa. Yeah which is like the hippie kingdom of the world, where uh -huh. my brother still is now. Yeah. He's never left. And um, I moved back home two years ago uh -huh. to take care of my dog, who died a month uh -huh. ago. Uh -huh. And I fell in love with a woman Good. and her nine-year-old daughter Great. that keep me in this area. Yeah. And um, Sounds, but you said your life was unusual and strange. Every day of my life, I sort of go down my porch yeah. like I'm breaking through a, a a banner to a football yeah. Yeah. being like holy shit mm -hmm. this is life and it's full on yeah. pay attention and Co try to coincidence is when god winks at you and why is god and why is god wink and why does god wink so much because sometimes he lifts the curtain a little bit and gives you a peek at something you don't ordinarily get exposed to many many people many people buy real estate with the goal of improving the property all right? They want to improve the property that they bought, but one day they're gone and the property is still there. Now other people, they buy nice clothes with the goal of improving their appearance, but one day they're gone and the clothes are still there. Awesome Clawson, the only property you can really improve, the only property you really own is what's in here. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing worth improving. Yeah.